Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the transfer of assets abroad rules. And I don't think I've actually done a video on this before. Um, so what is it? So the transfer of assets abroad, TAA, it's been around since 1936. So it's been on the statute books quite a while. And basically what it is, the thrust of this legislation is to prevent people who are UK residents transferring assets overseas and having the power to enjoy the income from those assets that they've parked offshore even though they're still in the UK they can still they still have power to enjoy the income and what the rules do is say look we're going to tax you on it even if you know you think you've moved it offshore but because you have the ability to enjoy the income of those assets we will hit you for income tax in the UK on those assets even though they are no longer UK uh, situated all right so that's been in for decades and decades and it's every so often there is a, a court case not that many it seems to be every few decades actually there's quite a, a, an important court case that just clarifies the rules that have been in place uh for 90 odd years or so so what's happened this time well there's been a case that's come uh has been held has been heard in the supreme court so it's gone right up to the top court in the land in the UK, and I just thought I would share that with you. So basically, transfer of assets abroad. Over the years, certain things have come out in terms of what does the rules mean. Well, first of all, you don't have to have actually received the money. So let's say you've parked some assets overseas, you transferred them abroad, but the, the income thereon, the yield on those assets is kept offshore. That doesn't matter. It's not actually paid to you in your UK bank account. Or even if you've got a UK bank account overseas, you haven't the, the 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 revenue stream hasn't been remitted to you. That doesn't matter. You'd still potentially be on the hook for the income tax. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it was tested about can this thing only be on the transfer or because if you think about it, you could park assets overseas and then. You know, Mr. X is entitled to the income, not you. And he's so far removed from who you are, not even a family relative. Seems a bit harsh that that would be caught. Well, that was tested in the courts and that is not caught. So it's quite narrow insofar as it's the transferor who moves these um, assets overseas. If the transferor can benefit or the transferor's spouse can benefit, then these rules bite. Not to someone who's totally unconnected really or you know far removed from the transfer all so there's a couple of things anyway so what happened in this particular case was this you had three family members who controlled two companies one in the uk one in gibraltar and the businesses were all about online gaming okay so betting online and the same family, the same three individuals controlled both companies, UK company Gibraltar. So of course, any dividends, say, received by these individuals from the UK company, yes, that's subject to tax in the normal way. Okay. So, but then they had this offshore thing going on as well. And offshore, depending on what they did, you know, the, obviously lower, lower taxes all around, basically. Um, but they had two distinct businesses. But what happened here? What, what was the thrust of this was this company controlled by these three individuals were getting clobbered really heavily for UK uh, uh, gaming duties. So duties on on gambling. Uh, they ran this online business and they were getting hit for a significant amount of uh, gaming duties. So they said, you know what? We're going to transfer this trade that's in the UK. We're going to transfer it to our existing Gibraltar operations. So this, I don't know what was left in the UK company, if it was the entire trade or not, but there was significantly less going on in the UK following the transfer to Gibraltar. And as a result, less stuff was coming out from UK company to be taxed on the UK resident shareholders. So, HMRC invoked the TAA, Transfer of Asset Abroad Rules, and said, hang on a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got this rule on the statute books. It's 1936. It says that, you know, you do this sort of shenanigans. We're just going to assume for in income tax purposes, because this is crucial. This is a personal tax. This is income tax. 
capital gains tax as well. But in this instance, we're talking about income tax. And we're going to just assume that, you know, whatever you're um, paying out from here, we'll, we'll treat it as if it had been from the UK all along, as if the transaction had never happened, really. To all intents and purposes, we're going to invoke this transfer of asset rule and we're going to tax you on the the income uh, from um, Gibraltar. And basically the taxpayers kicked off and said, that's ridiculous. And it went through all the courts and there's quite a few rounds. You've got the lower tribunal, the upper tribunal, the court of appeal. Anyway, the Supreme Court said this. This is what they said. They said, right, this legislation cannot be in point because the legislation is all about a personal tax play, for want of a better phrase. It's all about income tax. Yes, there's a capital gains tax strand. But the point is, who's been transferring what overseas? Transfer of assets abroad by individuals. But who's transferred what? Well, actually, what happened was this, these individuals haven't transferred shares in a company abroad. What's moved is the trade of a UK company to Gibraltar. So in actual fact, the company has decided, company, separate legal entity to the shareholders, the company made the call to move some of its trade offshore, transfer of assets abroad, but not by the individuals, it's by the company. So the company have moved trade to this offshore jurisdictions. These guys who control the company technically haven't made that move. The company's made the move and there are separate things and issues with companies moving assets. But basically, they don't fall under this when companies do this sort of thing. This is, this is for individuals. And so HMRC lost the case and the taxpayers won. They successfully argued and said, look, this legislation does not bite in this circumstance because we didn't move the assets abroad, the company moved the assets. Yes, we may control the company, but it's two distinct things. It's, it's um, shareholders and, and, and a corporate in its own right. And it was the corporate that decided to transfer this asset. So an interesting case. Now, it doesn't mean carte blanche that if you're in this sort of situation, they think, oh, great, we'll just move stuff from my company over here. Because as ever in the tax world, there's so much nuance and detail. And it's quite a simplistic overview just giving you the thrust of what happened, but an interesting landmark case in this legislation, like I said, doesn't get litigated against very much. And these some of, the, some of these other points were like 30, 40 years old where they said, yes, it has to be narrowed to the transfer of everything else. Um, but just an interesting, interesting case, nevertheless, that the transfer of asset rules did not bite in this instance because it was a corporate play rather than an individual place. So there you go. So just an overview there on a recent case testing the rules of the so-called transfer of assets abroad. If you like this video, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.